Hi, this is Mateusz Furs from the Concrete Injection Made Easy podcast. This is episode number 18. And today we are going to discuss uh, something that is called taking over of the construction site after another contractor. And today uh, I'm going to discuss uh, re-injection of the crack. But I think I will make a series of episodes uh, under the this common uh, title taking over of the construction site. In the future, I'm going to make uh, another episode uh, explaining how to re-inject the expansion joint and how to re-inject and seal the pipe going through the concrete. So this is my plan to make a series of episodes about re-injection of something that has been repaired and injected, injected uh, before. Perhaps you remember when I asked you and I sent an email to my subscribers to fill and take the survey. So some of you asked me to uh take this uh, subject of taking over of the construction site uh, after another contractor uh, yes it is difficult yes it is more expensive yes you need to go into the details really understanding what is the problem with the construction site All of my guests of previous uh, episodes really highlight this necessity of uh, job site investigation. They all uh, insisted on asking questions and gathering the information in order to really understand it and being able to uh, give uh, the best working solution. So this time even more important task gathered all this information, uh, understand the situation, understand the problem and understand why the previous contractor uh, made a mistake. It's so absolutely so important. Before I dive into uh, all these uh, details, I would like to just say that I'm not going to deal with the business part of this uh, of this problem. So I'm not going to discuss how to sign a contract. I'm not going to tell you what kind of price you should give to your client in order to re-inject the crack. But I think that we all know, agree that this time, this uh, injection should be more expensive than the first one. Sometimes it, the, the problem is the price because first, at first uh, the investor Uh, found uh, the cheapest solution, the cheapest contractor, and that is why they were not well skilled. Uh, and this was the main reason why the crack is still leaking. So now it is you, uh, you are about to re-inject this crack, and um, so your price absolutely has to be higher. If you listened to previous episode of the of this podcast, uh, it was the interview with the uh, representative of the Forum on Injection Technology from Germany, from Cologne. Uh, from this episode, we learned that this kind of uh, repair should be definitely should be the subject of the design office project. So, well. They say, they suggest that uh, the contractor himself should not uh, make any decision on the technology. However, we all know and we are all the time asked by the investor, by our clients to come over on the job site and suggest a, a solution to a given, uh, given problem. So even though that we should have the designer to give the specification, the technology, uh, we are all the time asked to do it by ourselves as a contractors. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Because obviously the investor wants to have the problem solved quickly and uh, the cheapest uh, possible way. So like 
we have this this expression that the best uh, time for this job to be done is yesterday. Yeah, you know, they want to have it done yesterday. No, even not not today. Yesterday. Okay, so let's start uh, today's topic. We are on the job site. We see the crack. We see the crack that has been already injected. So uh, we need to ask ourselves the question: What is the reason that the crack leaks again? Is it the reason that the crack has been injected improperly? Uh, or the reason is that there were some forces that destroyed uh, the ceiling. And then we really need to know this reason. We need to understand that the cracks uh, are most often formed uh, at this very moment of setting the concrete. So most likely uh, there another leakage uh, from the same crack is uh, caused uh, by the applicator, the former applicator. What does it mean that the crack is leaking? It means that the crack has not been filled with resin, injection resin, properly. It hasn't been filled fully. So there are some gaps, empty spaces in the crack that let the water going through it, right? This is the reason. Uh, so uh, our task at the moment is to find out the mistakes and understand why previous contractor didn't fill the crack properly. What went wrong? And I will give you some uh, points, some questions to be asked, asked and answered in order to understand the, this problem that has been done before. Uh, so our task at the moment is to fill fully fill the crack with new resin. Let's do it. Okay, so as I mentioned uh, just a second ago, we see the crack. What do we see? We see the crack the, itself on the surface of the concrete, no matter if it's a wall or a slab, we see the crack, right? And we see the leakages. Uh, perhaps we even see the water coming through the crack or, or the water drops uh going out of the crack so like yeah and what do we see uh even more so we see old holes drilling holes perhaps we see even old packers that are still uh in the hole so if we see old packers it's even better uh, from for two two reasons. First reasons being that we can see the angle at which this holes has been drilled before, and the second thing is that there is a pucker inside the hole, so the hole is closed with the pucker. So when we are going to to inject uh, using new puckers and new holes and new puckers, then the resin will not be able to flow out of old holes. If we see only holes, then it's a little bit uh, more complicated to find out the angle, uh, the angles of the old holes, but it's absolutely necessary to know the angle. Uh, what do we see? We see spacing between holes. And we see the spacing between the holes and the crack. And we need to know it exactly. We need to measure it. And we need to find out it. We need to compare it to what we know about how to inject into the crack. Because this will give us uh, information. After you collect all this data about the spacing, holes, angles, diameters of old holes, everything. Uh, so after you done all this uh, job site investigation about how this crack has been ejected before, you need to compare this information with new calculation about how this crack should have been 
injected correctly. And the most important thing you need to know, absolutely know, 100% is the thickness, the thickness of this, of this concrete, of this concrete wall or of this concrete uh, slab, no matter what it is. But you have to know the thickness because this thickness, this information about thickness gives you the possibility to calculate everything else because the spacing between holes will be half of the thickness. The angle should be somewhere around 45 degrees. Uh, of course, if you start to drill uh, around half of the thickness away from the crack, all this information is absolutely necessary and you have to compare it because this um, will give you the answer what have what might have uh, go uh, wrong before if there were no injection packers in the holes uh, then it's a little bit har harder i guess this is the more common situation because usually you know uh, the packers are removed uh, just after in injection three days after injection so when you are called to repair, re-inject the crack, repair it once again, then it's like three or four months later. And uh, so we can expect that there will be no injection packers in the holes. So it is a little bit harder. Why? You need to drill these holes once again carefully. You need to drill it like they were drilled before because you need to understand what is the angle, what is the original angle and you need to understand what was the diameter of these holes before. Because uh, in most cases you will have to use a bigger drill bit. Like if there were uh, holes of 10 millimeters, then now you will have to use a 13, one three millimeters uh, diameter of the drill bit. But if there were 13 millimeters, then you might try to use the same once again a 13 or a little bit more like i don't know uh 15 or 16 millimeters diameter uh because and then you of course you will have to use bigger packers uh so you drill 13 you use 13 packers 13 diameters you use 16 you use 16 packer 16 millimeter diameter of packers uh, why because in most cases, when you have to re-drill the same uh, the same hole, then you will uh, destroy a little bit the um, internal walls of these holes, and then the diameter will be bigger, and you will not be able to install the same packers as uh, as before. So this is important. You have to have. Uh, different different packers, different diameters of packers, because you never know uh, what packers were used before by the other contractor. After you collected information of thickness of this concrete being injected, and you know the spacing and angles of the holes being drilled by the previous contractor, Please draw a diagram of the concrete cross section. You will see the crack, you will see the old holes and its angles, and then you will be able to determine uh, from this uh, cross section, from this drawing, how deep the holes, old holes, have crossed this crack. And I can assume that they cut it quite uh, shallow, meaning close to the surface of the concrete, uh, below half of the cross section, half of the thickness of the cross section. And that means that this is the mistake. It means that the feeding place where the old resin were about to go from the holes into the crack, they were too close to surface. 
they weren't in the middle of this concrete being repaired. And that is why the resin were not able to fill the crack correctly and perfectly. Once again, we are talking about the situation of the cracks being formed at the moment of setting the concrete. I'm not discussing the crack that they were made, made by the overloading the concrete because if, if this is the case that there is an overloading of the concrete, then the cause of showing new cracks is not removed. So the, the problem is not solved. We are just talking about the situation that the crack appeared at the very beginning and we are seeing this. Uh, once again, because someone else has made a mistake during the injection process. Yeah. We are collecting all the information, uh, uh, and try to understand what mistakes were made before, uh, in order to make re-injection of these cracks once again and to fill it. So we have uh, discussed uh, angles. We have discussed uh, spacing between holes and the number of holes per one running meter. And all this is made, uh, all this cal calculation is made, uh, is taken from the core principles of crack injections that we know the spacing between holes is half of the thickness. Angles should be around 45 um, degrees. Uh, if the hole were drilled more or less half of the, the thickness from away from the, from the crack. And then we have this uh, diagram drawn, dry diagram. We can compare what the situation that should have been, uh, with the situation we see on, on the job site. And in most cases, we see the difference in depth. Uh, the difference is sometimes it's, it's huge. The difference in depth where the, the holes should cut the, the crack and it should be, it should cut in the middle of the cross section. But in most cases, uh, the, the crack is being cut by the holes below half of the cross section. So our task is to drill another holes, new holes, mm, more holes, because we need more feeding points uh, per one running meter. So after I made this list of uh, things that should be collected, or this inf list of the information should be collected, uh, let's uh, dive into the another list, a list of things uh, should be done step by step in order to inject the um, uh, crack properly. Uh, let's do it. First of all, uh, we need to take uh, care about old packers. Hopefully they are still there in holes. If, if they are there, you're lucky. You don't have to remove them. You don't have to drill uh, once again the same holes. You just keep them uh, because they will make uh, the holes um, being tight and you won't lose any resin through old, old holes. That's great. Yeah, you're lucky. If there are no packers, unfortunately, you have to drill the holes. You have to drill the, these parts of packers that are still in the holes. You need to install new packers, as I mentioned before, most probably using a bigger diameter, new packers, bigger diameter. Uh, that's first, uh, first step. The second step is, uh, you, Calculate the spacing between new holes, uh, spacing between new packers and spacing between new packers and the crack. And you drill new holes and you drill new holes even more than, than if, uh, if you were about to inject this uh, crack for the first time, at least 20% more of cracks. So usually you would, uh, you would drill, uh, let's say, uh, six to eight holes. Now I would say at least 10 to 12 holes per one running meters. Of course, you have to calculate it according to this rule of 
the spacing is half of the thickness of the concrete. But uh, the more the better, because you need more holes, more feeding points of resin. Okay, so after the holes are drilled, I mean new holes are drilled and cleaned, uh, you need to cut the resin and close it with mortar, uh, epoxy mortar or uh, cementitious mortar in order to prevent the resin to flow out of the crack during the injection process. Uh, because we, we know for sure that the resin will try to fall out, uh, flow out from the resin, uh, even more than usually, because there are more holes being drilled and there is a resin, some of the resin, old resin is still in the, in the crack. So it is more difficult to fill this crack with new resin where in the situation where the, um, the old, old resin is still there, here and there, it's still there. So it, new resin will have difficulties with flowing uh, through the crack. In the other words, you will have huge difficulties in driving the resin into the crack. I just mentioned old resin. It's great if you could uh, collect the information what kind of resin has been used before. Uh, in most cases uh, it was PU based resin, but what kind of resin? Was it resin uh, that uh, creates foam, a foaming resin? Or resin that uh, does not create any, any foam or almost any foam? Uh, so the more you know about this um, repairing material that has been used before, the better. And uh, speaking about your resin, you should really use low viscosity PU based resin. Uh, the lowest, the better. Uh, but what I mean low is around 50 to 55, 60 millipascal seconds. Some producers will tell you that low viscosity is around uh, 150 millipascal seconds. But I don't consider this kind of um, viscosity being low. That's the first point. The second, remember that you are here to re-inject the same crack once again. You have to have, you have to use really best possible um, injection material, injection resin. You cannot use uh, resin that looks like honey on the job site. So you will use the lowest possible around 50 or even lower uh, viscosity resin. Uh, you will mix the smallest possible amounts around up to 150 milliliters because you will, you, you need to use the fresh resin. If there is a situation uh, that the old holes uh, are drilled too narrow or simply there are bad angles uh, taken and the hole past the crack uh, close to the internal surface of the concrete, uh, then we know uh, that our new holes should uh, be uh, drilled much deeper and uh, later uh, during the injection if we see the resin coming out of old holes that it means uh, there's the, the, this different in height between old and new holes in height when the holes are cutting the the crack so when there is this this difference and you, you we see the resin coming out of the um, old holes it means that we have filled the the crack the space. I'm not sure if I made myself clear uh, just before, so let me let me go into the details into these details once again. There is the difference in height between the new holes penetration point into the crack and the old holes penetration point into the crack. And if we inject this difference, uh, because we see resin coming out of old holes 
then we have at least injected this difference. So we can conclude that uh, resin uh, is in the crack. Then we go further and inject more resin into the holes to fill uh, the crack in this part of the crack that is external to us. I mean, that is more far away from us. Yeah. Uh, and if we, if our new holes were uh, uh, drilled in this way that they cut the crack even beyond the half of the thickness um, of the concrete and we still see the resin coming out of the crack, then we know that the, the crack is filled really very well uh, and uh, we can expect that this time the injection process is, uh, is being done correctly. When re-injecting the, um, the crack, uh, we drill holes uh, close to the external surface of the crack, meaning very high, uh, as a kind of checking point uh, to see if, if we've uh, fully filled the crack, because we've, we will run the injection using the regular um, holes and packers installed in, in these holes. And if we see the resin flowing out of these holes that are... Uh, drilled close to the external surf surface uh, and but still cutting the crack then we know that the, the the crack is really fully filled i mentioned this uh, many times before uh, including my uh, online webinar but uh, once again you are going to use open packers so what i mean by that is that you will attach nipple only to this packer you are about to inject. All of the rest packers are going to stay open because you are going to observe the resin being driven uh, down the crack. You are going to dehydrate the, uh, the crack. Uh, and you need this absolutely crucial information about where the resin is in the crack. I have to say that during the injection process, we will have leakages, resin leakages everywhere. It will look like almost all the resin is flowing out of the crack itself and some part of the resin will flow out of old holes after old packers, even though the packers, new packers are installed in the same holes. So even though you see that you are losing this resin you have to remember that some part of the resin goes exactly where it should meaning into the crack and it fills the crack uh, and it goes it, it the, the, this resin is driven into the crack so no matter how much resin you lose you inject this because you know that you have installed you have drilled proper holes and you installed proper packers and now you are running the injection no matter what. You know that there are old holes, you know that there is old resin into, in this crack and it's not that easy to drive the resin into the crack. But you have to do it because the, there is no other way than uh, doing this. So in the end, we can say that re-injecting the crack takes more time. It takes more money because you drill more holes, you install more packers, you use more resin than usually. Uh, it has to, it simply has to cost more. Uh, but it gives you the opportunity to build your own brand because you are the one who is uh, capable of re-injecting the crack who is capable of taking over somebody else's job site uh, and um, yes there were years that i have been re-injecting more cracks than um, than you know injecting the the new ones perhaps it sounds funny but uh, there was a time that i was considered to be the one who really uh fix this kinds of botched job sites and not only f when it comes to crack injection also for uh, when it comes to um, expansion joint
and other types of injection. Yeah, uh, I just re remind myself that next week we are going to repair, re-inject, <laughs> yeah, re-inject the expansion joint that has been injected last year and it's uh, it's leaking. Um, so uh, yes, I will take pictures. I will uh, exactly uh, make notes uh, what we have done in order to repair this um, expansion joint. But the plan is that we are going to remove old uh, acrylic gel and we are going to inject a new one. We will clean the whole on the, the, the internal walls of the, of the expansion joint. I will make another episode explaining this uh, technology uh, step by step. So uh, yeah, I hope, I hope that you will find it interesting. All right. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, I just wanted to say that, uh, it wasn't easy to make this uh, episode because I wasn't reading anything. I was just making, you know, I just made some notes, some bullet points, what I wanted to um, mention during this uh, podcast. And I'm just saying this like I was talking to someone uh, and having a coffee. In fact, I had two coffees during this um, recording today. Um, I hope you like it. If you have any questions to this technology, please feel free to let me know. And as usually, I hope you will tune in next time. Bye-bye. See you.